A client of mine wanted to add a timeout for their quiz question slides that would time out after 20 seconds and then display a message to the learner that they've run out of time for that particular question. And they didn't want to use the built-in widgets or learning interactions that are included with Adobe Captivate. Can't say I blame them. So I came up with this solution that involves uh, some user variables, a couple of system variables, and uh, an advanced action, which I'll show you how to write here. So here's my quiz here, just a short five question quiz. And you can include a time limit on all of your question slides if you wish. Uh, or you could choose, let's say, half of them. It doesn't have to be all of them. In this case, I'll do every other uh, question. I will set a time limit and we'll say 10 seconds. And we'll also include a timeout caption so that the learner knows that they've run out of time. Uh, on the other questions, there won't be a timeout limit. And uh, what we'll do is get started with this by adding the appropriate user variables that we need. So I'm going to go into the project drop down menu and select variables. And we'll click add new. First user variable we need, uh, we're going to create our own countdown timer. So we're going to call this one countdown timer. And I don't need an initial value. And optionally, you can add your own description. I'm going to hit save and we'll add another one here. This time it's going to be called a null variable. In other words, I purposely wanted to have a null value. I don't want it to contain any zeros or characters or anything like that. And this is going to be used for comparison purposes uh, when we write our advanced action. So I'm going to go ahead and hit save and now I can close the variables window. The next thing we want to do is we want to add a text caption on our first question slide. And we're going to add that, place it on the slide where it's easily seen. And I'm going to place mine just down here at the bottom and make sure it's centered. And I'm going to write time left colon and I'm going to insert my user variable that I just created called countdown timer. Don't worry about the maximum length. 50 characters is plenty and we'll click OK. You'll notice that it puts two dollar signs on either side. That just lets Adobe Captivate know that this is going to be a variable. And I'm just going to follow that up with the word seconds. So we know that it's in seconds there. Now I'm going to set the timing for this text caption to appear for the rest of the project. Make sure that it's not blocked by anything else by placing the object on top. Now we really won't need it for the slides where we don't have a countdown timer. And don't worry about the fact that it appears on our quiz results slide. We're going to take care of that with the advanced action. So let's start by building our first advanced action on the first slide here. We'll go to the Actions tab and on Enter, we will choose Execute Advanced Actions. And we'll start to write our first advanced action script by clicking on the folder icon. And we'll give this uh, advanced action a name. It's going to be called Countdown. And there are going to be two decision tabs for this particular advanced action. So we're going to label the first one Reset Timer. And this is going to be a conditional advanced action. And we're going to say if, and we're going to use one of our system variables that's available to us, CP in review mode is not equal to the literal value of zero. And we're going to change this from all conditions are true to any of the conditions of, are true. And that will change the normally displayed AND option here to OR. And then we're also going to look at CP quiz info question slide timing and see if it's equal to that other user variable we, we created called null variable. So in other words, if we are in review mode or 
we happen to be on a slide where there is no timer set, we'll perform the following actions. We're going to hide our text caption. And as a best practice, we should probably label this so it's easy to find later. And then we're going to have some else statements as well. So under else, we're going to show. So in other words, uh, we're going to show the text caption on cases where a slide does have a timer. And we're also going to assign countdown timer with the value found in that same system variable CP quiz info question slide timing. Next, we're going to move over to the second decision and we'll label this one countdown. Now, this is also going to be a conditional tab, but it's going to be a little bit different. In this case here, it's going to be a while statement. So we're going to run these actions over and over again while the following conditions are true. So in this case here, we're going to say while countdown timer, remember this is the one we created, is greater than zero. In other words, they haven't run out of time yet. We're going to decrement countdown timer by a value of one. Now anything you put in these actions down here at the bottom will occur about once every second. It's certainly going to be accurate enough for our quiz. So we're going to save this as an action, click OK, and click Close. Because we're resetting the value of our countdown timer, we can use the same advanced action on all of these slides. So I'm going to select slide two, where my next question is, and we'll execute advanced actions and make sure that countdown is selected. Same thing here, here, and here. And on our quiz results slide, we'll simply hide text caption one and continue playing the project. One more thing we need to do is go into our Edit drop-down menu and select Preferences and make sure our quiz is set up the way we want it. So we'll open up the Quiz category, click on Settings. We'll make sure that the user is allowed to review the quiz. Let's make sure it's possible for them to pass the test and on a passing grade Let's just simply exit from the course. Let's allow them infinite attempts and let's show a retake button and click OK. So now let's give this a try. Let's go preview in HTML5 in browser. So we have 10 seconds left to answer this question. Who is the official head of state of Canada? It's Queen Elizabeth. Perfect. We didn't run out of time. Notice it stops at zero seconds and I can click anywhere to continue to the next quiz question. Now there is no timer here, so notice the caption disappeared. So I can simply choose which one is the capital of Canada. We'll hit Submit. Click anywhere to continue. And again, we're on a timed question now, six seconds to go. Uh, in this case here, I'm going to get this answer wrong. We'll hit Submit. Oh, I ran out of time. Again, it stops at zero. Click anywhere to continue. True, false, including its water. Canada is the second largest country in the world. I'm going to say false. Oh, that's incorrect. And when did Canada start using the maple leaf flag? Well, that's been around forever, so I'm going to say 1935. So I failed. And I want to be able to review the quiz, but I don't want to see that countdown timer. So fortunately, our advanced action takes care of that by checking to see if we're in review mode. And then it hides, of course, that caption. So we can review our quiz and see what we did well, what we didn't do right, and so on. Let's reload this and take that quiz again, this time being successful. 
So we've got a few seconds left here. Queen Elizabeth II is our head of state. Ottawa is the capital of Canada. Justin Trudeau is the prime minister as of 2015. True. And it was actually 1965. And again, I can review the quiz and I don't see the timer as well. If you thought this video was useful, please share it with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, consider hiring me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that helps you achieve your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com, follow me on Twitter at CaptivateTeacher, and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.